All right, so we're checking out the Haybike City Run electric bike in this video. So if you're looking for a cruiser, sort of city commuter type of electric bike, this is definitely one you're gonna to wanna to check out. I'm gonna cover all the details of the features and everything in this video. Um, been Actually, I've had this for a few months now. Um, been riding it quite a bit, and I'm, I think out of all the bikes I've reviewed so far, you know, not a whole lot, but I, close to 20 bikes now. Uh, this is probably one of the better ones out there. And for the money, um, I think it's around $1,200. There might be some coupon codes in the description. Uh, I think this one's definitely up there in terms of value and uh, in terms of quality. So let me go ahead and just uh, start talking about this here. So there's 26 inch wheels in this one. Then it's a little bit wider tire than typical on a city or commuter type bike at 26 by two and a half inches. And it does have that sort of eraser colored sidewall tire, kind of gives it that retro look. I really like the, the way it looks and the road tread on this one obviously is gonna be appropriate for um, you know city type streets, asphalt, sidewalks, etc. Not really meant for off-roading. There is a front fork suspension on this one with a lockout and a preload adjustment. Don't know the name brand of the, the uh, suspension, but it does a good job of smoothing out the bumps on your typical roads and sidewalks. Uh, the ride is pretty comfortable. There is no rear suspension, but the seat in the back is pretty comfortable. It's um, not too soft, but it's soft enough and nice and wide. I was you know, able to ride this around for hours and hours without really feeling any discomfort at all, um, even without a rear uh, suspension. The battery on here is fairly large, 15 amp hours or 720 watt hours. It uh, is removable. You can charge it in the bike or outside of the bike. There's a small little rubber cover. You can pull back to charge the battery in the bike if you don't want to remove it. The charger that's included is a four amp uh, fast charger. So it can charge the battery from empty to full in about four to five hours. So pretty quick for the size battery. and. This battery does give you about a 55 mile range. Uh, it depends on, of course, your terrain and conditions and how hard you're riding it. Uh, this combined with the 500 watt um, rear hub motor gives it adequate enough power, but it's, I think uh, this is mainly um, intended for you know, long commutes or you know, basically a lot of miles without having to charge it often. So the City Run does have a cargo rack in the rear. Now this is not necessarily intended to be a cargo bike, but it can hold up to 330 pounds of total weight. So you can definitely put a bag or a basket back there and you know, load it up and you know, be able to carry a bunch, of, a bunch of stuff around without any problem. This bike can handle the extra weight, no problem. And I think that goes to the sort of the quality of the construction of the frame, even though it's a step through. Uh, the joint, you know, towards the bottom where the pedals are, you know, can be a little bit vulnerable in some of these, especially if you add a lot of weight. But this one has, you know, you can see at the bottom, it's very thick. The welds in this one are clean. It's very nicely constructed. It, does, it feels really solid. It doesn't feel like it's uh, got a lot of rattles or anything like that. And, you know, you ride around, you know, as long as you're not doing any sort of off-roading, this is going to be perfectly fine for city streets. And it's going to give you a nice, solid, comfortable ride without a lot of worry about the bike sort of falling apart on you. So the seat height is adjustable and they have a recommended height for riders from five foot four to six foot five. And so if you're obviously shorter than five foot four, I would probably not recommend this bike because uh, you're not gonna be able to reach the pedals. It is a bit of a taller bike compared to a lot of other ones. It's um, a bit on the bigger side. So obviously you wanna be at least five foot four. And if you're a taller rider, I think this is going to be a really good bike for you because up to, up, up to six foot five, I think this bike should be able to handle no problem. I'm six foot tall and I feel right at home on this bike, no problem. So of course, to add to the sort of premium feel of this bike, it does have hydraulic disc brakes. Very good stopping power in this one. Um, even though you're not really going to be going too fast in this one, which I'll show you later on in the speed test, the stopping power of the brakes is more than adequate for this bike. So the handlebars on this one are curved a little bit backwards and so the basically the grips are angled back so you can sit up on the bike without leaning forward too much. I think you know actually it enhances the comfort level of the bike. 
The grips are, you know, they match the color of the seat, that nice brown color, and they're ergonomic. Pretty comfortable to grip, no really complaints about the grips. The bike display is really large. You can see everything clearly, even, even in bright sunlight. Uh, has all the information uh, nicely displayed there. It's one of the nicer displays I've seen on an e-bike. Over on the left, you have your bike controls. You have to adjust your pedal assist up and down, uh, turn the bike on and off. There's also uh, turn signals for the front and the rear lights, which I'll show you here in a second, uh, which is a really nice feature of this bike. The wire management on this bike is really pretty clean compared to a lot of other bikes. Uh, you know, the Most of the wires go into this, the center part of the frame at the top and then come out the bottom, so a really nice clean look. Um, you know, you're not going to really notice the wires getting snagged anywhere. It's just, just they're kind of out of the way, and you really don't notice it, which you know kind of gives it a clean look. Plus the fact that the battery is kind of stealth, and you can't really see where the battery is. It's kind of inside the frame. It does give the appearance that this is not an electric bike. So as I mentioned, there is uh, lights on this bike, uh, front and rear. Uh, front headlight has turn signals, of course, left and right, and also in the rear is a brake light that will actually light up when you, you know, grab onto the brakes, and also has turn signals left and right on the back as well. All right, so I just want to show you guys what the uh, light looks like on the bike. Sun just set, and this is uh, about the brightness is what you can expect. It's fairly bright. But I thought it would be a good time to um, show you some extra bike lights from a sponsor. This is from Olight. This is the Wyvern and the Go Torch. And the Wyvern here, the blue one, is 300 lumens maximum brightness. And the Go Torch is 2000 lumens, so it's much brighter. And the, the Go Torch has this like really huge battery that you have to attach to the bike. Uh, has a little button here, shows you the uh, battery level. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the um, the uh, main bike light here, and we'll show you these other ones. So you have to actually turn off the bike. This is the, it's, it's an automatic headlight, and it'll turn on whenever it detects it's dark. So I'm going to turn that off, turn off the bike. And you can see there's a little bit of ambient light. Here's a street light here behind me. Turn on the wyvern first and it's a little blocked by the wires here and off on this has SOS mode I think that's the maximum brightness three levels of brightness there so that's the maximum a little bit brighter than the the, uh, the stock bike light and we've got the go torch here, we'll turn that on. The uh, wires are kind of in the way. And it's, uh, yeah, there's two levels of brightness. There's sort of medium and that's maximum. And <laughs> that's really bright. Way brighter than the other bright of the lights that I just showed you. Um, no SOS or anything like that in this one. Just a super, super bright light. Uh, yeah, obviously you want to mount it a little bit better than this, of course. But yeah, if you're looking for a really bright light, this one is pretty good. Anyway, back to the video. The shifting system on this City Run is kind of your standard Shimano 7 gear system. There is a uh, chain guard on the front. That's uh, a plastic chain guard to prevent your clothes or your pants from snagging on the chain. Do you note that the front pedals don't fold up and the bike does not fold up. This is not a folding electric bike. Now in terms of uh, the shipping and the packaging and the build of the bike, um, very you know well secured in the box. Of course, you know lots of zip ties and foam and everything to protect it from being damaged. So it did come very well shipped and no damage at all from the shipping. Fairly straightforward to put this together. Uh, you know, put the handlebar on, like most typical bikes, put the front wheel on. This one, of course, you have to put the front fender on um, after you put the wheel on. The rear wheel is already uh, attached as long, along with the rear fender, but you do have to install the rear rack. And it didn't take too long, probably about overall approximately 30, 40 minutes total to put the bike together, so really not that bad compared to 
typical. I mean, it's really typical compared to a lot of other e-bikes. All right, we'll start off in uh, pedal assist level one. We do the pedaling test first and see how the motor speeds up the bike and what kind of speeds we can get. So just some gentle pedaling here. I'm not exerting myself. Roughly nine, a little under nine miles an hour, about 8.6, 8.7 or so, between eight and nine, eight and a half and nine miles an hour. A level two. Going a little faster now. Uh, approaching 10 miles an hour, a little under 10. 9.6, 9.7. Go level three. All right, now we're picking up some speed. Uh, 13 miles an hour, a little 13, yeah, a little over 13. And I'm roughly about half battery right here, so uh, to give you a realistic idea of what kind of speeds we're getting. Let's turn around. All right, now let's go to level four. And we've already hit 16. I am freewheeling a little bit here. So we're going about 16 and a half miles an hour in level four. I hit level five now. Eighteen and a half miles an hour on level five. All right, so now we're gonna go down pedal to level zero. And if you hit the throttle, nothing. So we're doing a throttle test here. We'll go to level one from zero. How fast can we go in level one? Looks like it's a little slower than pedaling. 5.9, 6.0, it's about six miles an hour. Let's go level two, throttle only. Uh, nine miles an hour. Okay, dropped a little below nine miles an hour. So run nine miles an hour, let's go level three. And we're hitting about 12.8, 12.9. Oh, that wind. All right, so let's go to level four, throttle only. Fifteen, sixteen. Topping off at around 16.2 or 3, 16.2. All right, level five, throttle only. 18, 19. Looks like we're, we leveled out at around 19.8 miles per hour. So overall, here are my thoughts on the Hay Bike City Run. I think this is, you know, for the price, it's sort of a mid-level price, but more of a premium feel. The bike is a very solid bike all around, um, very comfortable to ride, very good range, uh, everything's very easy to use. Uh, just overall, the experience, I think, was very good in this one. I, 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 I can definitely recommend this one if you're considering this bike I didn't have any problems with it putting it together was pretty easy um, I felt like it was um, at least you know for me for someone who has sort of lower back problems I was able to sit up on the bike and uh, it didn't really put as much stress on me so um, you know, if you're looking for a bike that lets you just sort of sit up on the bike instead of leaning over which a lot of bikes tend to do uh, definitely check this one out because you're gonna be able to sit up more with the sort of slope backed handlebars and the grips uh, you just feel you know very comfortable on the bike you could probably ride for long periods of time 
Uh, so if you're like, you know, doing long rides, this one is definitely going to be up there. Just if you're going to be on a lot of rough roads or off-roading, I wouldn't recommend this bike because it only has a front fork suspension, no seat post suspension, but this is, this bike's not intended for off-roading. It's intended for, you know, riding on bike paths, streets, and sidewalks. can handle a few bumps, but uh, I would not recommend this for, um, you know, dirt biking or off-roading. It's not intended for that purpose. Anyway, that's going to do it for this video. Links down in the video description to all the stuff that I talked about in this video. That'll do it for this one. I also have a uh, link to a playlist to my other electric bike reviews. If you want to check that out, if you want to check out some of the other bikes, they'll be down there in the video description as well. That'll do it for this one. Talk to you guys in the next video.